Wellness is a holistic yes. way of being, and it is a practice. When you are not feeling that you are living to your highest potential, I invite you, and I, this is the pebble I live, to look at the different dimensions of your life. Good day. Welcome to Ripples, Physicians' Wellbeing, a space to discuss coping with stressors while training in the field of medicine and tips for overall wellness. Learn more about the wellness home services at gmewellness.utesca.edu. And don't forget to subscribe to stay updated with new episodes wherever you enjoy podcasts. Hello and welcome back. I cannot believe it, John, that this is our last episode of the season. That's yes. And uh, and like the, the end of last season, I think if you're new to the Ripples podcast, this is a great episode to listen to because it really gives you a flavor of the type of topics we talk about. And, you know, certainly, um, you know, this is really directed towards physicians, especially physicians in training, but I think pretty much anyone can find value to what we talk about here. Definitely, I agree. And just like last epi- uh, season, this episode is about a compilation of pebbles, and pebbles are calls to action. So we leave with you all the things that you can do throughout the year to hopefully promote your wellness, and with that, the wellness of others. Yes, absolutely. And with that, we'll uh, introduce our first pebble. And, and this one was a great way to start. It was by one of our faculty, Dharam Kaushik, who's a physician and urologist here at UT Health San Antonio. And he talked about uh, yoga for physicians. And actually, he has his own uh, yoga uh, sessions that he holds for, for invited physicians, uh, one of which is called Beast Mode Yoga, which was really, which was really fun. So... Uh, and he's going to, in this pebble, he's going to talk about uh, a really neat breathing exercise. So the pebble uh, would be being present. And sometimes it's difficult. We want to be present, but we don't know how. What is the practical way to be present? If okay with you, I'll teach you this small exercise. Please. Yes. Yes. Please. Okay. Uh-huh. So it's a breathing exercise. It's a, a three-part breathing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, So come to a normal seated position, relaxed, arms by your side. And you can close your eyes or you can leave it open. And now just focus on your breath. Just watch your breath go in through your nostril and go out through your nostril. Don't change anything, just breathe. And slowly come to awareness of your breath. Bring your mind's attention to your breath. Now take a deeper breath on a count of three. One, two, three. Hold. One, two, three. Breathe out, one, two, three. Inhale, one, two, three. Hold, one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Inhale, Slowly, one, two, three, hold, one, two, three, exhale, slowly, one, two, three, one last breath, take a big inhale, sip more air, get more air, And let go of everything. And slowly open your eyes. Feel so refreshed. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, of course, you're activating your parasympathetic system with that exercise. 
Yeah, that that never gets old. That's one very neat exercise. That's yes. called box breathing is, is yes. a term for that, and it's, it's really helpful. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. And I love that he talks about being present and this being a way to be present yes. because that seems to be one of the most important things when we are trying to be mindful. Yes. And then we have two episodes that relate to each other back to back. One is with Ms. Vijaya Botla. She's a clinical dietitian and the president of the Alamo Nutrition Council. Mm -hmm. And she did an amazing job leaving us a pebble talking about how to put together a well-balanced meal for residents with two considerations, that we have little time and sometimes little money, <laughs> yes. and th they're both important. And just continuing the importance of nutrition mm -hmm. and being balanced, we invited for the following episode, Dr. Uh, Vidya Iluri. She's an endocrinologist here, and she follows um, the previous post podcast to expand a little bit on just not only nutrition, but the importance of good hydration, sleep hygiene, and other things that you can do to stay balanced and well. Yes. So I think these are two powerful pebbles. Great. So I've been thinking about this, and I think a great pebble maybe that we can do is walk ourselves through um, how to create a good meal. A nutrient dense okay. meal. Yes. So let's start off with breakfast, you know, mm -hmm. which is, yes. you know, a lot of times a lot of people might want to skip, but something quick and easy that we can do. So think about, you know, having a complex carbonate, mm -hmm. a good source of protein and healthy fat. Because remember, and a bonus is to have fiber in it. So think about getting um, for a good, quick and easy breakfast might be cooking an egg, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. putting it on a, t a piece of whole grain bread and putting some avocado on it. That oh, has a complex yes. carb I can and imagine. egg yes, that's and avocado. And if we're looking for a vegetarian option, it could be the slice of bread with some peanut butter and then having a piece of fruit. And then the peanut butter acts as the protein and mm -hmm. the healthy fat. And then you have the bread and then your extra fiber is going to be the fruit. So that's a very easy, quick and easy way to do it. You know, if you think in those terms, it's yeah. so easy to build, you know, a healthy diet. For our residents, please, please take a moment to stop and, and think about yourself and think about caring for yourself because you can only care for your patients. You can only learn about those diseases that you're reading about. You can only learn your surgical techniques if you are well rested and well nourished. So please make time to sleep Take time to do your hobbies, whether it be walking or exercising or playing a musical instrument, taking time to socialize, and try to pick healthy food when you go to the cafeteria. Try to pack food when you're in clinic. <laughs> <laughs> and then drink lots of water. Wonder, but, yes. you know, if you can get, I, gosh, and I know it may not be every day, but on the days that you can, seven to nine hours of sleep. Yeah, that is that is so important, and and one of the things increasingly we're we're understanding is that that good nutrition, good hydration, uh, sleep conditioning, all of those are critical for performance. And one of the things we'll potentially be focusing on more in season three of our um, Ripples podcast. Yes, I cannot wait to hear it. Yes. So, in keeping with the 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 idea of back to back episodes. Uh, we really wanted to focus this year on some financial issues. Um, as people know, a lot of residents had their loans put on hold during the COVID pandemic. And then subsequently, now that we've seemed to pass through that, um, the, the government has once again had residents begin repaying yeah. their student loans. And as you can imagine, that's put a lot of financial stress on many of our residents who are already financially stressed. And so we had two really great episodes, one by Victor Smith. Victor is a neonatal fellow here uh, and not, a, not an MBA, not yes. a financial wizard, but someone who realized, you know, he had a wife, he had children, and he really needed to understand uh, finances, budgeting, so that he could provide best for not only his family now, but for their future uh, in retirement. And then we followed that up with Andrew Paulson, who's a uh, certified student loan professional uh, and uh, affiliated with White Coat Investor. And he really took a much deeper dive into the idea of loan uh, repayment 
and some really important loan forgiveness programs, things that I think will provide a lot of help for many of our residents and fellows. Yes. The uh, thing that would really encourage uh, residents the most as they continue to look at their financial well-being and their financial journey is that um, it is exactly that. It is a journey, and it is uh, one that takes small steps. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would encourage them just to start. If it's somebody who um, has looked at their finances and just thought, man, this is this is a lot, this is overwhelming, that that's okay and that it's okay to just start just by trying to trying to look sit down and, and look at your information and say, okay, today I'm just gonna take that first step in looking over my bank account. Mm-hmm. That that right there is is even, you know, enough for that first step. Next week I'm gonna try to look at it of maybe just trying to do a little bit better tracking of what I'm spending money on. And taking those first steps and then going out for resources. I think that that's the other thing that um, is really important for for residents and fellows to realize that they don't have to become an expert in it, but they have to be able to know where good resources are. In, in regards to your student loans, if, if you can get educated on your repayment options, on your forgiveness options, this can save you tens, and if not tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and could potentially get you into a situation of work being optional or or moving into less hours earlier on in your career than you could imagine. So a small investment in in your student loans will go a very long way for you. I love that Victor talks about it as being a journey because sometimes we feel the anxiety of, you know, I I need to pay this off. I need to get this under my belt now. And it's just not realistic for our residents right now. It's better to plan ahead. And that's also what uh, Andrew Paulson says. You know, if we start planning now and we start taking small steps, and I love how he breaks it up into very little steps. Maybe today I'm just going to look at my bank account. That alone can be scary, (laughs) (laughs) but it's worth doing it and then taking the next steps to financial wellness. Yes, and and. And especially the idea for Victor that you you don't really need to be an expert in this. In fact, uh, he started knowing very little. And it's just taking the time and effort to learn little by little, as you said. Small steps ultimately make a big difference. Yes. Then we invited Dr. Ife Williams. She is a psychiatrist, and she is the founder and CEO of a dating app called Miss Doctor. And she discusses the inspiration for the app. It's a physician-only, doctors-only Brilliant. app. Brilliant. Yes. Wish I had thought of it. Yes, because <laughs> she knows. She knows the difficulties. She went through it herself of, you know, finding that person that is can share your life in this busy life that we live. And she um, gives us a lot of good tips about how to do that, being one of the biggest issues that our uh, yes. residents go through. Yes. I would say always make time, as, as little time as you can, to um, devote to your personal life goals just as you're pursuing your professional life goals. Um, It may not be a lot of time, but every little time matters. And look into resources and options that allow you to make the best use of that little time that you have. And, you know, look into apps and platforms that allow you to better, you know, that increases your chances of finding what you're looking for. Knowing what you're looking for in the first place, like we said earlier, um, is very important. Make time for your hobbies. You could meet someone doing your hobbies. Always remember who you are, or who you were before you got, you know, started this training, you know, going down this path. Um, if you used to like dancing, you know, go find ways to, you know, reunite that that passion, even if it's one hour or two hours a week, you know, on a weekend that you're off. Um, make time to think you just never know who you might meet trying to do that hobby, like running, you know, get into some activities in your city. There's so many little ways that you can um, potentially meet someone to help you 
uh, you know, achieve this personal life goal that you have. In the meantime, you know, spend time with your family, um, make time to call your friends. You know, for a lot of us in residency, we we just struggle with time so much. You know, you barely have free time. Sometimes our friendships suffer as a result. You know, find some, remember some of your old friends, you know, talk to them for 30 minutes to an hour. Sometimes you never know. They might know someone who's single. They might um, or your network of friends, you know, you just never know. So these are things that can feed both your need, your social need, as well as potentially help you with achieving your personal life goals. Um, along those lines, too, you know, I definitely want to say um, not losing hope is very important. You know, it's very difficult for a lot of people, you know, especially as you inch closer and closer to a certain age, the pressure increases. But recognizing that things oftentimes end up end up uh, turn out beautifully you know eventually at their own timing when they're meant to happen i know some people don't like to hear that you know people tell them oh it will happen when it's meant to happen um but we just don't have control over these things you know despite you know all our you know wanting and you know wanting things to happen a certain way for a lot of female doctors, we're type A, you know, by 30, I want this. By 35, I want this. Yes, I want it's true. This. Out the window. I was the same way. I thought by 30, I'll be married. By 35, I'll have two kids and, you know, whatnot. Didn't happen. I wasn't even married at 35. Yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, you still have hope. And, and somehow, you know, universe aligned and I met my husband and I'm very happy that I now have my one-year-old daughter. Uh, and there are many other stories similar to that. But not losing hope is important and still doing things and still doing what you can do as well um, to, to help that happen. You know, the one thing that I really liked about this particular um, podcast is the fact that um, if he talked about the fact that she had it all planned out. She was going to be married by 30. She was going to have two children by 35. And then she finds that she's 35 years old and is neither married or has children. <laughs> or has children yes. um, but it ultimately worked out. And it's and it's kind of great to know that for many of our residents who have also these plans, yes. that you're not alone, that many people share those. They don't always reach those plans. But, you know, with, with time and and some of these wonderful tips, uh, yes. you're going to be successful too. And it's a difficult balance because w as residents, they are invited to plan everything. They have very, you know, strict schedules that are not under their control. They have to follow these rules. And then when it comes to their personal life, they want to have a plan. Yes. But that's not how life works. Yeah, life doesn't works. work that way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> so it, it's good to have that reminder. Yes. And speaking of that... Um, we then, uh, speaking about planning, and this is one case where planning may be important, uh, we had a very important talk by uh, Dr. Winifred Mack, who's a gynecologist and infertility specialist. And she was talking to us about some of the challenges that many of our uh, female physicians are facing in terms of their fertility, getting pregnant uh, during their busy training schedules. And she really talked about... Um, you know, things about in vitro fertilization and, um, and uh, egg harvesting, things that, you know, aren't often talked about in residency, but are critical. And I think this is most critical because increasingly more and more women are going into medicine and subsequently into residency training. So these issues are going to become increasingly more important in the years ahead. Yes. So an excellent episode. Um, so I would tell all women out there, there's never a right time to have a baby, but um, start early. And then hopefully you'll never have to see me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said something very important, John. We need to talk about these issues. These are issues that we really don't discuss yes. out in the open, but it's true. More women are entering medicine. This is going to be something that they have in mind and many times is worrisome yes and we have options we just have to be able to discuss it and i think if more women in medicine felt comfortable talking to other women in medicine about this they will realize that is that they are on the same boat that yes. they are not alone in this absolutely and um i, I think it's also uh, one aspect of this too is when we talk about having a holistic wellness program, 
this is the type of thing that we mean, which is it's not just about screening and providing counseling for mental yeah. health issues, but it's about financial issues. And in this case, it's about infertility issues. Yes, definitely. So, so with that, uh, uh, we come up to one of my absolute favorite episodes. Uh, uh, and this one was with Melissa Aguirre. And Melissa is a certified yoga therapist and just really interesting person. And she really talked about the science of yoga um, and it, and how it can reduce stress and uh, increase vitality. And, and for Melissa, you know, she really likes to take things down to the, to the science of this. And for her, it's all about control of the nervous system, what she calls yes. cooling the nervous system. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. Well, as long as you're not driving right now, <laughs> I would invite, uh, take your hands. You could just bring your hands together. Interlace your fingers and just rotate your wrist. And let's take a moment, like pop your knuckles, yes. like feel the feels of this experience, like the stretch of the hands, and just take a big my breath in. My knuckles aren't popping. I don't know if that uh, means I'm not my flexible. My wrists are popping. <laughs> yeah, get some circulation. Take a big breath in. Big sigh out. And you could do that three times. You could do it once. But this is just a way. Get in the body to feel, to ground. And, on, and they joke that the flexibility of our hands represents the flexibility of our mind. This is why in yoga there's mudras, right? And yes. that has to do with parasympathetic fibers. We won't go there today, but just know there's a whole thing about those as well. So the hands, and we have the most sensory input in our hands. So if by doing things like this, you could just do this throughout your day. You're beginning your practice. You're beginning to yield those benefits. I think this was the one episode you and I did together this yes. season, and I had a lot of fun too. <laughs> we were laughing the whole time. She just exudes that, you know, feeling comfortable with yeah. her and helps you regulate the nervous system just with her presence. So I completely believe that her exercises work, and I was very happy that she shared with us. Yeah, and, and this pebble, the one where you interlace your fingers yes. and move your wrists around, is actually something that I intermittently do throughout the day since that episode, and I found it to be really valuable. So now we start with one of my favorite episodes of this season because I have a personal connection to Dr. Kari Calvus Trubes. She's a surgical oncologist here in our institution, and she was my doctor when mm -hmm. I needed her the most. It's a very vulnerable place to yes. be, and it's so amazing to have somebody that seems to have everything put together that makes you feel warm and understood and she's always there never feels rushed it's amazing someone she, you can really trust yes yeah. that you can really trust and that's so important so we wanted to invite her not only to talk about the fact that cancer might be rising among younger women but the fact that she is a very successful surgeon. She went through residency, she's married, she has kids. How did she do all this? Yes. And it was so powerful to hear her saying, I didn't have it all together all the time. I yes. had to sacrifice some things and it's doable. So I invite you all to listen to her. And I think just to kind of tie in all the things that we've talked about, uh -huh. we've talked about self-care, for patients advocating for that self-awareness, but also for yourself. So I think really kind of the, the biggest thing for me is from not only patient advocates, but also as residents, as fellows, as trainees, is, is to take care of yourself, have awareness of your own health, but also give yourself grace for the period that you are in life. It is a point of time we go through stages in life. You have to give yourself grace for the challenges that are expected, that are normal. But also, don't forget to take care of yourself. Um, I guess that's my that's pretty vague, but I think that's my biggest thing is to just be intentional um, about what your to do list is. But give yourself grace when you when you can't can't do that and, and advocate. You have to advocate for your own health, and the same thing for your patients. Advocate for their own self awareness yes. for their health. Yeah, the, the one thing that I think she really hits on here is, you know, we used to talk about work-life balance as if that's possible. And increasingly what we talk about now is work-life integration. So that there are times that you're going to be busy and work is going to take, you know, you know, lead on the stage. But then subsequently there are times where it's not as busy, it's not as stressful, and you can devote more time to yourself, to your family, uh, to your children. And I think that you know, she really gave us a great 
view of what that looks like. Yes. That reminds me of a wonderful yoga class I went to one day and we learned the idea of balance and counterbalance because we think that balance is static, but it's not. There's always a little movement back and forth. And I think that's how work-life integration works. Sometimes we lean one way and then we have to lean the other to find the center. Yes. Yet another reason that people should do yoga. Yes, (laughs) definitely. Thank you, Jackson. Our wonderful producer and editor, Jackson, just threw us for a loop here. And he asked what people we would like to leave for our audience today. And I think that kind of putting together everything we've been talking about, wellness is a holistic way of being. And it is a practice. And that's what I want to leave with our audience it's not a destination we don't get there and we're done and it it really has to be you know a compendium of all these different areas and dimensions of life so when you are not feeling that you are living to your highest potential i invite you and that this is the pebble i live to look at the different dimensions of your life and you can google the wellness wheel and you'll find six to eight dimensions in which you can check, am I feeling complete when it comes to spiritual life or financial well-being or even your environment? Just living in a house that you feel unsafe or that is messy or dirty can mess up your wellness. Yes. And I love that you use the word practice. Yes. And I think practice is a great word because it implies that we're not experts in any of these things, but we constantly have to work towards all of those domains. And sometimes we may be successful, other times not. But as long as we're continuing to work towards something, we'll be successful. Yes. I think my pebble um, relates to COVID. And, you know, over the last year, we've really felt like we've moved out out of the pandemic, out of the 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 specter that we may have new surges and things like that and i think there's been a lot of discussion about how burnt out how stressed how exhausted uh we all are how um what mistakes we made during the pandemic what we could have done better and i think that's all important but what i haven't heard is that i think we also should take time to really reflect on our successes, the fact that we went through a really challenging time and medicine as a, as a whole stood up, faced it, and ultimately overcame what was and will be one of the most important aspects of our, our history. And so I really would invite people um, not just to, to focus on the, the negative, um, but really, in a sense, pat yourself on the back for what we, you've really accomplished yes. uh, over the last several years. Uh, it's, uh, I take great, great um, joy in what we were able to do. Yes, that's true. And that's why Dr. Coran is such a pleasure to have you <laughs> as our Assistant Dean for Wellness. Yes, and uh, it's wonderful to work with you and, uh, and Vina this year. And we look forward to season three and, and more adventures. Exactly. And thank you, Jackson, for the loop. <laughs> <laughs> Ripple's Physicians Wellbeing is made possible by the Joe R. and Teresa Lozano Long School of Medicine Office for Graduate Medical Education. To contact us or learn more about the wellness home, visit gmewellness.utesca.edu. This podcast is inspired by the Dalai Lama's powerful quote. Just as ripples spread out when a single pebble is dropped into water, the actions of individuals can have far-reaching effects. We provide physicians with pebbles, tangible and actionable practices that can help make positive impacts in their personal and professional lives.